press Eric over here. Just gonna go over the basic cross collar choke. Cover him a belt, make it easy. And so it's really basic. We just start with the the just we just want to be really really loose. You want to have that zipper feel all the time. You never want to really hold tight like that. Is there any stuff? Yeah. Like and so one of the cool things that I'd uh, I'd heard with this is that uh, I'm trying to think what the analogy was. You want to use the, the like you use the vice grip for the job. So you don't need to like hold tight. You just need to hold collect enough to where you you have the ability to connect the neck. So that's basically what this is: is using the hands as a tool to connect to the hips. So if I come here, I'm going to get this. I'm going to conform to Joe's neck right here like this. And I'm not going to hold tight because if I hold tight, it makes it tough to get this opposite yeah. hand in there. So I just want to come here and I bring this in and I like to try to make my knuckles touch. I'm just going to connect. I, and the really, the cool thing is that I, I want to, you can even hold like 10%, but a good way to ch check if you're doing this correctly is he can grab both of my forearms here like this. And so see how he can try to stop me here and if I have a bad choke, it doesn't work. Or if I just try to use my hand, it might not work. So what I want to do is I always want to just keep this 10% grip and bring him to me. And no matter how hard he holds, my hips are what choke him. Like yeah. That's it. And, and that, that's exactly how Helio Gracie would do it. Yeah. A, they'd say, didn't yeah. even realize that hand was in the collar oh, so until stupid. you were choked. Yeah, that's the other thing about, like, when somebody grips you, yep, you you're you immediately go. alerted to where their hand is and what they're doing. But if it's, if it's just kind of loose, you forget about it. Yep. And when we talk about doing this from the guard, it's not your hands that is holding them in the guard. Maybe the bones of the arm, but it's really your legs yep. that are holding them in the position. Same with the mount. So you should be free to have like a little bit of a loose grip, knowing they're not gonna get postured, they're not gonna get away. And you can always kind of go off and on, mm -hmm. but a steady grip is never gonna work. Right. One, you might have to adjust your hands. So like, uh, I'll just do this without the jacket, just so you guys can see it. So. Uh, the conformity of the neck, I really like that uh, Professor Eric brought that up. If you look at the thumb, see it curves like this, and that's what's gonna wrap around the neck. So that's an indicator on how far your hands need to go. Because yep. what's a couple common things we've already addressed, the choke doesn't work because they grip too hard, but also because you're gripping hard, you don't get the hand back far enough. So now I'm on his collarbone, right? So then I'm gonna do the same thing yep. This is never gonna work. You're never gonna be able to choke somebody. And I, actually, I've, I've had a black belt try to choke me that way. Yeah, and I he, know. he got so mad at me. He was like, why are you resisting? I'm like, oh, sorry. I, I just didn't even notice. Cause I was like, oh, he's gonna correct his mistake. And he just, he never, never did, did, right? So because you have the iron grip, you have a fear of you can't readjust. Mm -hmm. Cause if you let go in your mind, you're like, I'm losing everything. But if you're controlling with your legs, you can always jog the hand up further and make those readjustments. So when we're sitting on our knees, this is the perfect time to do this. There's no resistance, yeah. nothing involved. I just have to find my partner's neck. So I'll actually I'll go left-handed so you guys can even see it better. So when I'm here, my thumb goes past his ear and see the curve is right along his neck. The other thing I, I don't want is my wrist to break or bend, kind of like a wrist lock. We call that breaking the wrist. It should be in a straight line first see so I'm not reaching behind his neck like that look at my fingertip okay so it's just straightforward like this okay now I'm going to take the other hand the same way oh man it's a little tight here just take your time and get both behind the neck and now the choke should start as soon as I put my grip together and turn my forearms and that's it so in the beginning you're probably not going to succeed at that so you're going to have to pull in yep, no out yeah exactly no out that's just an indicator that your grip isn't in the right spot or that you grip prematurely. See, like if I do the same good mechanic, but I grip early, yeah. now I can't really add more grip strength because I've already, I'm already at 100%. So now it's gonna take longer, maybe it's gonna work one day. So I had to do the whole inhale, do this mm -hmm. job here, because I'd already spent my grip before it was time to yeah. use it. Yeah. So imagine, that's without my partner resisting. So imagine I'm rolling with Professor Eric, yeah. and now, now he's gonna cover with his hand, he's gonna move his neck away. What happens? Oh, I'm gonna pull harder. Pretty soon, the grip is burned. Now you can't, you can't grab the collar at all. It's like, you turned into a baby. <laughs> yeah, and it's the same, because like, you think about, because you're right from the guard, it's like, that's a lot of it is because 
people have this idea of when they come here, they have, it's impossible for them to get the right angle because they're never in a position where they're trying to grab it like this. It's very tough to like conform that alignment. Like, but if I could turn my body, yeah, look how far this see, is. See, 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 see your thumb behind my yeah, ear. Yeah, I'm not breaking right. my wrist like yeah, exactly. this. You see, I mean, that's you want. You, it's very tough to choke someone like that right there. When you're too. bending it back. Yeah. yeah, but if you can like get on this line straight, straight here, and that's the big thing. Is disconnect enough. And see, if I, it's the same thing. Anytime you grip tight, it takes away material. So whether I'm coming under or I'm coming over, I need that material to be able to connect, right? Mm -hmm. I need that material to be able to connect. That's why it's such a pain in the butt to go underneath is because people hold hard and they can't get underneath. Yep. But if you just- Yeah, so even if we're here, oh man, I lowered his hand, right? Yeah. He might still put the second hand in, but he, now he's going to adjust his grip as I move her up. He's got it perfect. Now I can tell it's all. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Because his legs are here. I'm not going to be able to get all the way to my feet with his hands in my collar. Yep. So you got to be willing to make that adjustment. 100%. Okay. And the last thing you touched on was really, really good. Do not flare the elbows this way. The lats feel really strong when you do that. It's like a bench pressing motion kind of. But it's actually, it's opening the hands yeah. this way. So that you're, you're defeating yourself. You're opening the choke. So you want to think about like almost like a Thai clinch. Yeah. The elbows are going to come to the body and that space between my forearms is going to close like a scissor. And that's going to create the choke. Yeah, awesome, brother. Yeah, same thing in the mount. Mount's probably the toughest. We you know we could do a whole thing just on this. If I try to go head to head, one, if he bridges at all, I'm, I'm going to be tossed, right? But if I imagine he's just sitting here, get an angle. yeah, now what's going to happen is I'm going to have to fold my wrist. So a lot of people hate to choke from the mount. I'm wrist locking myself. Now when I go over here, I don't have any strength in my grip because it's being bent backwards, mm -hmm. right? But if I shift and offset my mount, now the hand can go in a straight line. So now all that's going to happen is my forearm is going to turn, but the wrist is not going to bend when I come over here. That's it. Super tight. Man, so, I mean, we've done it to each other, but you put on a good blood choke, you know, this is a vascular neck restraint, mm -hmm. right? They can be out in like 10 yeah. seconds. And it doesn't take a lot of Sometimes power. a lot, a lot. Yeah. And like, I think like what you think about it too is like, it's crazy, those clean ones, like when you really get a good clean choke, sometimes you don't even feel it before you're almost out. Yeah. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's really right there. You don't even notice yeah. it. When it yeah, because it's really clean. Up. Like, uh, like, Professor here has got a phenomenal choke, and believe it or not, I mean, we heard this early on and didn't really believe it at the time, I don't think, but when you put the first hand in, I can feel it starting, because mm -hmm. you have such good pressure against the karate. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. I bet you know, I was rolling with a kid the, the other day, and he was said the same thing, where he was just like, I, I didn't even have, I didn't even have this, this here. I think I had like, a, I had my hand in a, and just like almost as a frame but grabbing the material and he'd been training since he was six years old he's like oh my gosh what the heck was that and he could feel himself in. almost going out just because like i just i just connected to the neck right there and i, I didn't even have the other hand involved yeah and he was like oh my gosh you gonna yeah. watch that man that's crazy how'd you do that? yeah just gotta watch well yeah. it's just those details man like that i was at a seminar and i just got paired up with this other black belt and uh we're going back and forth through the choke and that he got right on my collarbones, and I'm just like, man, no wonder people don't don't think it works, mm -hmm. right? But it's just like the arm bar. You don't you don't believe in it until you find those details, you season it. You can think the arm bar is a really low percentage move if you're stepping over the head, yeah. you're leaving large gaps. The guy always pulls his elbow out. It doesn't mean the move is necessarily broken. There might be like more details behind that movement that you need to discover, explore, and learn about. Amen. And some people just don't share. Yeah, the guy, then I did the choke on that guy. And like, he's like, aren't you going to pull in? I'm like, sure. And I like barely move. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What did he do, right? Ask me how I did it? No. All right, buddy, I got to get some water. I'll yeah. be back. Never came back to work with me. He sat on the sideline, man. Yeah. If somebody shows me a move like that, I immediately am like, whoa, how'd you do that, mm -hmm. dude? So then I got to work with a color belt. And uh, they were from the same school. And that was... That was the conversation. Then he was like, how did you do that, man? Show me. Because when you have a choke like this, 
and you don't have to fight and struggle yeah and you can do it with like a minimal amount of effort it's so rewarding yeah because you can always choose to put more effort into it mm -hmm. but because you're not starting at a hundred percent you have all this like range for sure to go you know yeah and that's a good point you're assuming like uh, so you think about like what the color belt did right right like how do you get good you can be humble and you be kind that's Dude, if you don't have those Stop two the secrets, yeah. If you, if you don't have those two things going yeah, for you when you're trading and how you're interacting with the trading you partner, yourself. you give yourself a ceiling. Yeah. Because there's a point where people aren't going to help you out. You only have like what your natural athletic, like athleticism will do for you. And you don't have the ability to go beyond that. All right, let's inject something from uh, Pedro Sauer before we close this out. Uh, we already talked about it, but uh, if he puts a choke back on me from the guard or wherever. When he does it in a, you got to scoot on this side of the line. Oh, when it's in a like gentle manner, see it's twofold. He can put a precise choke on that really works efficiently, but also let's say I can defend and he puts his hand in. When he gradually turns up the pressure. Yeah, let's do it. See, it's, I'm not, you start like 10 and then I start doing a little bit. Psychologically though, when you do it that way, I don't know when the choke is gonna end. Mm -hmm. I don't know when it's gonna get better. It just feels like a nightmare that this guy can keep turning up the ratchet. Yeah. And then you, you start to think about like, man, when is it gonna be over? And it's like you got like limitless power because it's just a staggered incline. That does not feel that way. If he puts on his best choke, but you do it 100% yeah. from the get go, now here's the thing, we're gonna fake it a little bit so I can yeah, talk. Let's sure. say I, he goes grip as hard as he can and I and I defend it. Well now, psychologically, I'm better off. Mm -hmm. Because if I can defend his hundred percent attempt, I know that I'm safe. I know that you can't add any more. Yeah. So sure. now when he when he does that way, grip for dear life, yeah, oh I'm I'm feeling okay. I'm gonna start to pass. I'm gonna wreck the move. It's not gonna yeah. work for him. But when that question is there, like Man, can this guy make it tougher? Oh, it's it's gradual. It's like drowning. For sure. You're like, this is just getting worse yeah. and worse and worse. And I, when I first heard Professor Sauer talk about that, I was like, is it really though? But then we started doing it to everybody. Mm -hmm. And you can just see their expression. Oh, yeah. They just don't know when the choke is going to end. And their reactions are so huge. They get so big. Yeah. That the, like, all of a sudden, like, gosh, my sweep percentages go way up because yeah. they're doing everything. To they don't care the how their body's moving. They're just trying to get away from getting choked. And they're yeah. like, basically you rolling you that's over. It. Yeah. That's it. Crazy. All right, you guys. So that's the basic cross collar choke idea. Uh, I, I think training on your knees is really valid. So you mm -hmm. can see your thumb going behind the ear and really get that position where it's just about turning the grip and you're not sitting there fighting and everything. Right. Then do it from the guard. Then maybe try the mound eventually you go the cross body and anywhere you want. Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. Good stuff, guys. All right, Warriors. We'll catch you later. Thanks All for right. watching. Warriors out.